with the 10th pick in the first round of the FF Dynasty's rookie mock it up before you fuck it up draft. Big Co, you are now on the clock. All right. It gets interesting here. Drafting for the Washington Bullets. Interesting team name. Awesome team picture that he's got up there. All the star players. Take out my pea shooter and aim it at Calvin Ridley. (laughs) Pew, pew. I'm, I'm taking Calvin Ridley. I know Sounds that like it, something Jerry Jones would say. No one expected me to take a wide receiver. Well, I've um, been here since they had pea shooters. But we, <laughs> but we have gotten past the eight top running backs, and DJ Moore's off the board. This is true. Uh, I like Calvin Ridley's quarterback. Had the pick of the litter? As, as he's pretty much got the most solid quarterback situation of any of the wide receivers. Give it, even DJ Moore going to Cam Newton, you know, Calvin Ridley slides in there to play with Matt Ryan, a much more prolific, faster than Cam Newton. He's the best bout, best route runner, and he's going to come in there and have the second corner on him. Obviously, Sanu's a starting second wide receiver for now, but Ridley's the future. Sanu is very solid, but Ridley's the future. He's slottable, though. You can, he can be right in the slot, oh, if yeah. not the two off the rip. He's been working in the slot and out wide during OTAs. He, and, and Sanu's the same way, so they can flip-flop right. all over the place. And Sanu's guaranteed money will be all paid out to him by the end of this year. Yeah. So I look, could, I look for Ridley to really show up time after time splashing off the screen making the plays the, the making the ridiculously good looking plays that he made as a freshman in college maybe not consistently to where he's in your starting lineup every week as a as a rookie because of the Sanu um and at the other options they got two running backs that catch passes and a tight end that maybe you know hoping, Could to, emerge. Emerge. hoping to break out Could on emerge. his own spending spending uh, his offseason with right. Matt Ryan Hooper, Hooper said Hooper it's time for Ryan. me to get real I'm spending the offseason with Ryan. Every every time he wants to go out and throw, Hooper's there. Right, and I like that about Hooper, and, and that, that excites me about Hooper. But talking about Calvin Ridley here, and the, there are lots of mouths to feed on this Atlanta offense, but he definitely is in a position. He's a first-round pick, super solid football player, tough a couple of years there with the quarterbacks at Alabama. But, you know, you got Julio Jones to limit the defense's focus on anybody, plus a solid running game, and they just locked up Matt Ryan – uh, I mean, Calvin Ridley's in a great spot. Obviously, Julio could stay there for a while, or he could be gone fairly soon. So is what made you draft him over all the other available receivers just the fact of the quarterback and the, the maybe the closest to plug and playedness? If Well, really what made me draft him here over the Cortland Suttons of the world and the Christian Kirk, who I like a lot. I like both of those guys, actually. I mean, there's nothing – I like both of those guys. They're just rookie receivers, so – you know, sure. thumbs, thumbs down all around. Uh, but really and truthfully, I remember watching Calvin Ridley as a freshman. I'm a Gamecock. I watch SEC football. I remember those. I remember well, we those. Are in the South, oh, is that where so, you right. guys play? You guys play in the SEC? Oh, okay. yeah. SEC East Champs. No. SEC East Champs a couple times the last couple of years, if you didn't know. The, uh, is the SEC East real? Yeah. <laughs> it's just hard to see him over the SEC West. <laughs> the West kind of shows up. Um, those plays he was making as a freshman, I remember thinking, no, he's going to be on my dynasty team. And then as time went on, I was like, ah, he's probably going to get drafted too high for me to put him on my team. But then all this happened, it plays out the way it is, and Ridley's getting hated on and hated on and hated on. Tons of hate. There's no way I'm taking a wide receiver up in the top of the rookie draft because I'm going to take the best running backs. But if he's going to be sitting around at 110, 111, 112, 2 1, why not? I, yep. love, I mean, he's. I, I think he's going to be a really, really good NFL receiver. And you can't you, know. you have to basically just wipe out what happened for two years because Nick Saban's trying to win a championship he doesn't care what happens to his wide receivers he's got a quarterback in there that it squats 850 pounds and he's running it every play yeah and when he doesn't he gets you know Calvin Ridley has 60 catches and the next closest guy is Bo Scarborough with 16 14 you know? I think I think, I think it was 17 I think it was well, yeah maybe 17 we're all well, off <laughs> right we're all off but that's the point the, is Bo Scarborough the, the was the point second is, leading wide rec- or receiver on the team the point is when Alabama put the ball in the air it went to Ridley right right. and other than that I mean just take away for two years just playing in a run first run every run first down run second down run third down system and Ridley go back to his freshman year when he had a quarterback that could throw the ball and he was unstoppable and he was a freshman sure Yo, Calvin Ridley has the whole bag of tricks. Not to be confused with bag of dicks. <laughs> Not really sure where that phrase came from. One day I'm going to get to the bottom of that. Anyway, 
He's probably the safest wide receiver pick that you could take in this class. Like, if you're wanting to take a wide receiver and you're not trying to mess it up, like, Calvin Ridley's probably the way to go. I second that. He's, like you said, he's That's the kind best. of what I was getting at when I asked you that question. He's the best route runner of all these guys. He's a super high character guy. He just wants to win. He doesn't even want to talk him talk about himself. Like, he's, he's the opposite of a diva. He'll block all game long without one ball being thrown his way if had he has to. to. He already had right? to. Right? He doesn't give a fuck. He's right. down. And if this dude was 20 and not 23, people would be people would love him. Yep. But they want to hate on him because he had like a bad combine. Because he's something? old and he couldn't couldn't right? couldn't get off of press man, which I didn't really see. I didn't see that either. Too but, much of an issue. I mean, he is 189 pounds, so that's but not, he's not, wiry not the strong, best. huh? Well, that old wiry the broad strong jump, guy. But the broad jump. Well, they want to crush the combine, but he ran a 4.43 and a 6.8 second three cone drill, which are solid metrics. And and what I love it's, is when here, you let me point this out real quick. There's just like you were saying, there's players that will get the benefit of the doubt every time, and there's players who will just get hated on. Well, he had a decent spot in the combine there. A couple of things he did well, but those other things that he didn't do well, they're just going to hammer him on those couple right, of things because right. he's one of the guys who people are giving the benefit of the doubt to. Right. Well, they can't see past what happened for a couple of years there in Alabama. And he's only 189 pounds, can't be press man. And, 189 and, pounds? How, how heavy is his uh, Antonio Brown? Yeah. 189 pounds. Right. Look it up. Look it up. What I what I really like playing is playing the best competition weekend and as everybody's Super Bowl. I'm gonna take his good combine metrics and come combine that with what you see on the field. Well, with what you see objective. watching him play. <laughs> you take this fast, you take this quick forty and this solid three cone drill, and you see these measurables show up on the field with his game speed and his quickness off the line of scrimmage, his change of direction, the precision route running, the start and stop ability. Like a lot of these guys with great metrics, you don't always see that translate to the field. Like, take DJ Chark, for example. His metrics were off the chark, right? <laughs> but then when you see every single ball that he catches, it's that like he's... a K at the end. Seems like he's fielding a punt every time he catches a ball. Pulls he looks like the guy out. from the Little Giants who catches the ball in his face mask. <laughs> he, pulls his, <laughs> he pulls his jersey out like he's trying to make a bucket for However the ball. he could catch his ball. I couldn't ball, even watch it. I never even not watch touched it. his chest back, ever. Back to Ridley. So, so like, I'm going to take the good metrics that I saw, combine that with what I saw on the field... The safeness, the route running, the solid offense, the the high character. You can't you can't really miss with this guy, let me, man. Let me let me jump in here on that because I, I mean you can, but you can miss with any of these right. guys. But sure. and he feels cozy soft. I liked <laughs> I liked and seconded your your safest wide receiver in the class as a dynasty pick as a not screw it up. He's a, I, I second that motion for sure. The only thing about that is when you think when you hear safest, you hear maybe best floor, but the upside of this guy is through the roof no matter what people in the national syndicate here will tell you because you take everything you just said jay wayne and so i don't care if he's only 189 pounds the nfl doesn't that we're we're we just transitioned away from the 240 pound wide receiver like it just happened you don't have to be a power forward anymore to score fantasy points as from the wide receiver position look at look at robert woods is playing the two position for the rams last year before he gets his shoulder hurt, he's in the middle of absolutely being a WR1 in fantasy for six, six weeks in a row, yeah. just being wide open in a good scheme. There's and he's plenty of these guys. fast and able to take advantage of Doug Baldwin. Of Doug Baldwin. Calvin Ridley. Stephon Diggs. Calvin, Adam Thielen. Exactly. Exactly. Calvin Ridley's, he, he, I think he has the best floor, but his ceiling is up there with anybody else. And maybe he doesn't, he can't just juke you out of your shorts like DJ Moore. And maybe he doesn't make, the fade catch like Cortland Sutton. It's everybody's got their their niche and everybody's got their ups and their downs. But Calvin Ridley is well rounded enough to have as much of a ceiling as you could as you could really need out of a late first round rookie draft pick, and as much of a floor as you could ever expect out of a first round rookie draft pick. Sure, I think that was that was well put. I'm I'm definitely right there with you on. A lot of those things. I, I had a couple of guys ahead of. Uh, I probably had Sutton ahead of uh, Calvin Ridley here for the reasons of the stature and frame, and that I do believe that Sutton's got that Des you know, Bryant mold, right? That I think that he, you know a guy can come in there with that kind of size and frame, and we'll get into Sutton in a minute. But just those, I believe he's really raw and and could be kind of more towards like the Julio Jones kind of your big time number one kind of guy, a lot easier than a Calvin Ridley could, and that puts him over the top for me, but definitely don't have a yeah, problem. Yeah, and I don't with, mean it like that. Like the, no, no, Obviously, Antonio Brown's is not normal. 
you know, but that type of role, that type of wide receiver is happening more and more than it ever has before. For sure. So it's becoming a normal idea. Obviously, Antonio Brown's the farthest from a normal specimen more right. on the NFL football field, but the idea of a 189-pound wide receiver being your team's focal point is a lot more right. it it's a lot more acceptable. It doesn't have to be this ridiculous 220 pound 240 exactly. pound 6'4 guy Not that every time that, that teams have been stabbing on for right. years and years and years exactly you know calvin johnson kind of at just chasing that big frame super athletic guy you can get it done exactly. and the nfl is moving towards more of the six foot 190 200 kind of guy i believe oh, and no at all position at, at the running back position and obviously not at 189 you want your yes. running back to be bigger than that but just you know you know what i'm saying yeah i do it actually uh maybe two or three weeks ago my boy sigmund bloom put out a, a podcast that was really hit on a lot of that about it was i think it was just like a draft review or a draft uh, you know kind of summary or something like that and they really hammered into some wide receiver uh theory about size and just what you just said about you know stabbing at that Calvin Johnson frame because it just never it there's only one you know Calvin Johnson right. and all the other miss you're missing hits. out on all these other exactly. superb athletes who can get it done exactly so anyway that's gonna wrap up this this uh, one ten pick here we're gonna go to a break we'll be back with the last two picks of the first round of the FF Dynasties mock it up before you fuck it up fuck it up fuck it up fuck it up. <laughs> 